Welcome back to New Record Day. My name is Ron. If you are into two-channel audio, consider yourself an audiophile or music lover. Welcome home. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when the next video drops. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the Unify UB52 sent to us by Elac. The original Unify was an incredibly popular speaker for many audiophiles and music enthusiasts. And with a 2.0 being released, I'd imagine the biggest question on everybody's mind, myself included, is this. Does the UB52 sound better than the original UB5, and if so, how? And with a warm welcome back to New Record Day, that is exactly what we are going to find out. cables for hi-fi equipment doesn't need to be complicated, and today's show's sponsor, Audio Art Cable, is here to help with a wide range of cables for every budget. Now, NRD is no stranger to Audio Art Cable. In the past, we have reviewed their classic line, and we even took their award-winning statement series for a spin. Both of those reviews will be linked in the description down below. Rob Fritz was a huge fan of the original Unify speakers and owned a pair for himself. For this review, he recommended their Cryo E2 cables, including their IC3 E2 interconnects and SC5 E2 speaker cables. Not only that, Rob suggested trying some of their classic Classic Plus power cords, which we are using on all of the gear upstream. Now, keeping my integrity in check and knowing Audio Art is sponsoring this show, I'll spare you guys with a hyperbole and leave it at this. I do believe that cables can make a difference and recommend Audio Art cables lineup without hesitation. Last, just like he's done before, Rob is offering 20% off all Audio Art cables using coupon code NRD. But guys, you need to jump on it. The coupon is limited to 10 uses, so if you're thinking about it, pull the trigger and save today. Huge thanks to Audio Art Cable for sponsoring today's video. We certainly do appreciate it. Thank you, Rob. The UB52 is a three-way base reflex design featuring a one-inch soft dome tweeter, four-inch aluminum cone mid-range, and five and a quarter inch aluminum cone woofer. On the front of the baffle, there is a dual flared port for base extension as low as mid-40s in room. The nominal impedance of the speaker is six ohms, and the sensitivity is rated at 85 decibels. The crossover points are 200 hertz from the woofer to the mid-range, and 2000 hertz from the mid-range to the tweeter. Taking a look on the back of the speaker, the UB52 offers five-way binding posts, which Will accept a wide range of speaker connections, including bananas, spades, and even bare wire. Last, the UB52 comes in black ash vinyl and stands just under 14 inches and is approximately 7 inches wide and 11 inches deep. The first difference between the original UB5 and UB52 is visual. The UB52 is taller and thinner than the original. Also, the port has been moved to the front, just under the woofer. By moving the port to the front, this gives flexibility with proximity to the front wall and allows closer placement without ending up with boomy or exaggerated bass. Another visual difference is the size of the tweeter. Now to be clear, the actual size of the tweeter is approximately the same as UB5, but the tweeter surround is wider than the original. Based on concepts trickled down from Adante, this gave Andrew more flexibility with the tweeter's ability to not only reach higher frequencies, but also dig lower than the original design. The newer UB52 can now reach 40K and equally important, offered more flexibility with lower crossover points as well. Being specific, the original UB5 was crossing at 2700 Hz, and the newer UB52 is crossing at 2000 Hz. Another visual change seen in the UB52 comes from DNA that was learned from Navis. The woofer is now a one-piece cone, whereas the original was two pieces, consisting of the cone itself and an inverted dust cap. This change, while visual, also provided the benefit of a stiffer cone and better overall performance. Also, for those that had a hard time driving the original UB5s, 
good news is here, that while the sensitivity of the newer UB52 is the same as the UB5, the nominal impedance has been lifted from 4 ohms to 6 ohms, which makes the UB52 an easier load to drive. Getting to the point, everything driver related on the UB52 is new, so let's get this part right. This is not some rehash of the same speaker we've already heard, just in a reconfigured enclosure, but a complete redesign with all new drivers that needed to be retooled and built from the ground up. Also worth noting, the two and a half pound crossover inside the UB52 is the single most expensive part of the speaker. Andrew has reworked all the values, tying together the new drivers, and even more, focused on refining the voicing of the 2.0 to push the performance forward as opposed to just tightening up some nuts and bolts. The first thing that I wanted to try with the UB52s was seeing how they perform with lower wattage amplifiers. While I never felt the original UB5s were a difficult load, I was curious if I could tell much of a difference with the newer UB52s. So reaching for my trusty Leo made perfect sense. Rated at 25 watts into 8 ohms and 50 watts into 4 ohms, this seemed like a great choice for seeing just how the UB52s would respond. Well folks, I won't make you wait until the end of the video to share some pretty darn good news. I can say with confidence that the Leo did a fine job with delivering the goods and only when pushed to extreme volumes did it seem to struggle a little bit with bass and dynamics control. Either way, for those that are listening at reasonable volume levels and even dynamic swings into the 90s, something similar to the Leo should pair just fine with the UB52s. Now, I couldn't just stop at the Leo and call it a day besides I am an audiophile. <laughs> Knowing good and well that I have the brand new Marantz Model 30 and SACD30 in house, well, I just had to know what was gonna happen. Paired with this beautiful amplifier which dishes out 100 watts into eight ohms and 200 watts into four, I believe there was a more effortless swing to dynamic punches and having power on tap, it just made me feel all warm and fuzzy regardless of what I threw at the UB52s. Even more, perhaps the biggest difference between the Leo and the Model 30 was a tone shift with the Marantz being a little more lush and offered a silky texture throughout the mid-range. Either way, the lesson here is this. You don't need a ton of power to wake up the UB52s, but when you do toss firepower at them, they will keep pace without breaking a sweat. The moment I unboxed the UB52s and got a good look at them, I was surprised at how much of a difference the slimmer cabinet makes with their overall appearance. While I never felt that the original UB5 was an unattractive speaker, I have to say the slimmer UB52 does indeed make the original design look a little frumpy in comparison. Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> now with that being said, and maybe I'm the minority, but I much prefer the original textured vinyl that was released with the original debut and the Unify over the Black Ash being offered with the UB52s, but Black Ash is what you get, and for what it is, the vinyl does look convincingly like veneer. The first thing that I noticed within a few minutes of playtime on the UB52s is a sense of scale that quite frankly surprised me. I am very familiar with the original UB5 sound signature, and while I wouldn't say those sound like a small speaker, these UB52s are a different experience. Even in my larger room, which is 16 feet wide and 20 feet deep, I was impressed with just how big these 2.0s can sound. Even more, the scale of the sound was something that sounded holistic. In other words, it affected the entire performance. The moment I noticed this, I sent Andrew a quick note and got a reply saying, that's actually something that I was aiming for. So either way, here is my prediction. Number one, it will be the first thing that previous owners of the UB5s will probably hear first, and two, it will be the first thing that freaks out people that haven't heard the original UB5s. The second thing that stood out with the UB52s is balance. All too often, I find myself somewhat jaded by the industry attempting to come out with another flashy speaker that might do one specific thing that grabs our attention, but also neglects so many other fundamentals. In other words, they might make a speaker that wows us with its clarity on top, but when you play music with something like a cello, you almost forget to even pay attention because nothing interesting is happening. Ladies and gentlemen, if there is one thing that I hope you remember as a takeaway from this review, it is this. The Unify 2.0s, both the UB52 and UF52, are perhaps 
the most balanced sounding production speaker I have ever heard anywhere near this price point. And I can say with confidence, are the most balanced sounding I've heard from Andrew since he's been with ELAC. I would eat my hat if someone played cellos on these guys and fell asleep from boredom. It's not gonna happen. The reason for this is simple. There is something quite magical happening in every octave these speakers are capable of playing. In a word, it's balance. At no point am I drawn to one specific trait of the UB-52s, and instead, I am always drawn to the entire performance in the room. As you guys know, I typically break things down by the fundamentals, meaning top end extension, upper mid range, mid band, mid bass and bass. But here I am telling you that what impresses me the most about these speakers is the fact that I don't have to. Also, until hearing these, the honest to goodness truth is I felt like Paper Cone was the king when it comes to texture and tone and bass, but I'm now conflicted because these are delivering everything I have ever wanted in both texture and tone in mid bass and bass. Have I been wrong to think that all aluminum drivers should be backed up to a cliff and dropped off with the rest of 2020? You guys tell me after hearing these because folks, I report what I hear and what I have heard in these woofers is clarity, precision, texture, and tone. Consider me confused, but my goodness, these guys rival some of the best that I have heard in that category. Next, what about the ability to disappear? The more I learn about measurements and see the data paired up with consistent observations, I believe that great staging is a game of speaker placement, but is also tied to the speaker's ability to behave off access. Meaning what we hear on access is a mirror image of what is showering our eardrums from the sidewalls, ceiling, and floors. If you don't plan to watch how these measure in the next segment, I'll spill the beans now. These measure with some of the absolute best I've seen here at New Record Day. Specifically, their vertical off access is nothing short of incredible. Tight groupings and natural fallaways is what I see when I look at the graphs, but more important, it results in a speaker that absolutely vanishes in a room without much trouble at all. One thing I would encourage you to try now that we're covering speaker placement is crossing the streams. Don't worry, I have an entire video showing how to do this step by step. I'll leave it down below. Essentially, you will have the speaker slightly wider than normal. Let's say up to a foot past an equilateral triangle, and then you will aggressively tow them in so they are crossing right in front of you, hence crossing the streams. When I did this with the UB-52s, I got the best of both worlds. I had a tack sharp center image that's also holographic, more on that in a minute, but also a wide and relatively deep stage that showed off every single instrument within the mix with perfect clarity and precision. Last and perhaps the reason why concentric drivers are so incredible when done well is the UB-52's ability to place holographic images front and center. Make no mistake, it's not subtle, and when you hear it, it's addictive. The vocalist will be 3D and to a point where you feel as if they are in the room with you. There are times, depending on the recording, where this effect is downright spooky. So not only do we have scale giving a large, lifelike performance, and we have balance, so all the instruments sound natural, we now have a dimension to the entire performance. When set up correctly, you will hear a distance between you, the singer, the guitarist, the bassist, and the drummer, and when the singer steps up to the microphone, it's as if you can calculate the actual distance between the tip of the mic to the back of the singer's head. Yes, folks, this is the kind of precision that one can expect with a properly designed concentric driver and yes, the UB-52s absolutely fit in that category. All right, first thing we're gonna look at is an impedance sweep. On the woofer side, I'm showing approximately eight ohms and on the tweeter side, closer to 11. As we can see, the lowest point hits 4.8 ohms and considering that's within 80% of the rated impedance, the six ohm rating from ELAC fits into this category. Next, using Clio Pocket in a seven millisecond gated window at 39 inches, I took some shots of the UB-52 and here is where we landed. This frequency graph is showing my measured response on axis to the tweeter, which is in red. As you can see, the scale window is set to 50 decibels to 100 
100, which still lets us see data in five decibel increments. And folks, the response on the UB52s looks great. What we can see here is a clean and even response, even within a five decibel threshold. And here is the kicker. Andrew's reference point on the UB52s is actually 15 degrees off axis. So let's compare the two and see how that looks. As if the on axis wasn't already good enough, the reference point in green is even flatter and cleaner. So yeah, if you want my suggestion, when you set these guys up and cross the streams in front of you, see how close you can get to 15 degrees just off access. I tried it and it is incredible. Now, flat lines are great and all, but let's take a look at the spectral decay. I guess if you get a big enough magnifying glass, you might be able to find some stored energy somewhere, but let's get real. This is exactly what we want to see. Clean and quick to resolve without a trace of any nasty resonances or stored energy. All right, let's take a look at the horizontal off-axis measurements. In this example, I start on axis and I move a degree wheel 10 degrees at a time, which is expressed in the following colors, red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Remember, what we want to see here is a natural roll off from the on axis point to the others. And in this example, that is exactly what we see. Not only do we see a natural roll off, but we also see a tight grouping. Knowing that I'm measuring outside with sprinklers going off at 6 a.m., birds chirping, cars passing, and yes, my neighbors love me to death, I actually have a feeling this isn't as clean or as tight as these actually measure. Even still, they smoke most of the competition that I have seen, even when compared to speakers that are way more expensive than the asking price of the UB52s. Last, let's take a peek at how the UB52s do on the vertical plane. In this example, I start with the mic on axis to the tweeter, and then I move the microphone up four inches at a time, starting with what you can see in order as red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. So yeah, soak it in, folks. And if you hear a mic drop from somewhere in the distance, that's Andrew Jones. Outside of the XLS Encore, this is pretty much the gold standard and one of the best vertical responses that I have ever measured. I knew the UB52s were going to be good or even better than the originals. What I wasn't prepared for is just how much better they actually are. What we have here is an example of Andrew hitting a stride that quite frankly leaves a lot of the competition in the dust. And let me remind you, ELAC is not paying me to say anything in this review, nor do I expect to be able to keep these speakers as a result of anything I say. So I'll just be honest and tell you guys the dang truth. The bar is set very high and the bar has been set by the Unify 2.0s. They are easily my favorite production speaker up to $1,500, and I'm curious how much better these could possibly get, even if we see a Unify reference in the near future. But hey, Andrew surprised me with these, and if there is anything that I have learned from that man, it is this. Don't think for even one second he won't continue to surprise us with better sound. All right, folks, we're done here. We certainly do appreciate it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when the next video drops, and we will see you guys in the next video.